Navigating corporate America can be a challenge for black Americans. For many workers, the issues go beyond the daily grind of earning a paycheck. It also entails microaggressions that could hamper upward mobility. For more on this, I want to bring in Chad Sanders. He is the author of Black Magic, What Black Leaders Learned from Trauma and Triumph. The book addresses this corporate conundrum by sharing concepts and lessons of black business leaders excelling in an uneven playing field. Chad, welcome. Great to have you with us. Um, congratulations on your book. So let's talk a little bit about this concept of black magic. I know it's a big one, uh, and to ask you to sort of <laughs> encapsulate it in a few seconds is not really fair, but if you had to, what would you say? I would say that uh, corporate environments are not mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically safe for black people. And those who are able to withstand that onslaught have superpowers, to, to call them by another name. They have abilities uh, to withstand a lot, to navigate, to strategize, to execute, that they can use in anything that they choose to. And so you were sort of analyzing these superpowers, right? Sort of break it down for others and help them figure out uh, how, how to gain some of those superpowers themselves. But do you feel that... Um, that's sort of an unfair ask that you shouldn't need superpowers, you know, to get ahead in corporate America. It's incredibly unfair. It's it's just the way that it is. And the book is not to in any way uh, step away from that unfairness or step away from what's not healthy about corporate environments. It's really to shine a light on everything that we have to do every day, every skill that they, that we acquire and that we strengthen by doing so so that we can have ownership over those skills and use them for our own devices. For me personally, uh, I left Google, which is where I felt under the weight of that type of environment. And I started a media company and that's what brought me here today. So, you know, your book discusses the racial leadership gap among Fortune 500 companies, of which 90% are led by white individuals. And you focus on the leaders, right? You focus on the owners, you focus on the people at the top because you say, uh, you, that's where it all trickles down from, right? You can have all kinds of HR meetings and, and diversity Zooms and whatever, but unless the people at the top are focused on it, it's not really going to make a difference. Is that right? That's 100% right. You can try to boil it down to uh, diversity and equity conferences, buzzwords, quotas. You know, at the end of the day, I think the two questions that leaders of these companies have to ask themselves and be honest with themselves about are, do you like black people? Do you think they're smart? And, and then the question that comes after that is, do you wanna work with them? Mm -hmm. And if we can get people to start answering yes to all three of those questions, then I think we'll get somewhere. You know, I was thinking about your point here and how it applies right now to the NFL because they're going through something similar, right? I mean, it's the owners that are doing the hiring in a lot of cases and it's a small group of guys, right? So your point kind of applies there as well. Yeah, it's a boys club of the incredibly wealthy. It's a group of men who think they answer to no one. And in the history of the NFL and in the history of this country, I think it's been demonstrated to them that they're right. And I am so proud, so inspired, and so sort of emotionally connected to Brian Flores for the risk that he's taking, uh, which is potentially his livelihood, and it's almost definitely in the media his job, to shine a light on the way that people are being bullied, the way that people are not being given a shot, and the way that people are being completely discredited as black African-American coaches. Yeah, yeah, and again, to your point, it all comes from the top, right? Okay, so you also grew up with a belief that success comes with hard work and dedication, uh, you know, but you say that that's often not enough because there's a culture, right? There's a culture uh, that can outweigh these attributes. What challenges are black people facing in corporate environments? Well, first I'd say success for black folks comes with hard work and dedication and a hundred million different blessings and luck and skills. Uh, some people are handed success. Some people are, are grandfathered into it. And uh, that's not really who I'm speaking to in this book. You know, I would say the ways that the corporate culture does not necessarily foster our success is that there is just this emotional weight of having to deal with racism every day at work 
that we face that we don't get paid for. It's a job on top of another job. So by the time we get through all the emotional damage, all the psychological damage every day and try to do the thing that we do get paid for, a lot of times we don't have a lot of energy left for that. And Chad, you know of, which, of what you speak because you've spent a lot of time in tech companies and corporate America, right? And, and you say at one point you finally stopped trying to put on a little bit of the act, right? And just being yourself and success came with that? I tried to, and mm -hmm. I still try to every day. You know, there's some, there's some baggage from trying to get white people at work to listen to you, to pay attention to you, to feel you. Uh, that I still haven't released. And, you know, the crazy thing is I left corporate America because I wanted to be an artist. And when my art got good and when people started being willing to pay for it, um, you know, I'm back having to navigate sort of that white mm -hmm. corporate world again with studios and podcast distributors and music studios and, and, and all over the place. And I'm now grappling with trying to hold on to everything I learned when I got my voice back uh, and trying to make it through this system again without losing it again. So you have, you know, you have great advice in your book for, for other, you know, black people who are going through what you went through, trying to navigate the corporate world or whatever world that they're in, in which they're trying to get ahead, right? Um, but if you had to give corporations some advice on how to change, you know, internal culture without giving the perception that they are favoring one group over another uh, or that it's sacrificing skilled candidates to meet diversity demands, what advice would you give corporations? Invest in black talent, invest in it uh, financially, invest in it with leadership opportunities, invest in it with time and energy and vocal share in meetings. I would say uh, it, it, if, if your mission is to create a fair playing field, there have to be dollars behind it because we're talking about corporations, not, not uh, fraternities or sports clubs. These are capitalist organizations. Um, we need money. We need budgets. We need green light access in Hollywood. We need uh, push the button access in technology. We need resources. Uh, and I would say, I would really love a departure from the term microaggressions altogether. Mm -hmm. um, they're not microaggressions, they're macroaggressions. Mm -hmm. They're micro to you, because you don't have to deal with the reaction. They're macro to us because mm -hmm. we take it home, we take it to our family, we take it to bed, um, and these things hurt us. Right, and, and you said that you weren't surprised when you heard that a lot of, uh, Black workers didn't want to go back to, they preferred being on Zoom even because they felt like they could be at home working remotely and and be themselves, right? A hundred percent. And uh, black women especially have over-indexed mm -hmm. on that point of view. Right. Um, it, people are leaving their jobs in droves. They, they, they now are having this sort of jarring reacclimation to office cultures, corporate cultures, and they can't stand it after being away for a couple years in this pandemic. I think 40 million Americans left their jobs last year, uh, over 12 million uh, or 12 million in the last three months alone. And the, the mass exodus is upon us. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking to that a lot in, in what I'm working on right, right now. Well, Chad Sanders, thank you so much for joining us. The book is Black Magic. We appreciate your time. Thank you.